couple of years down the road, you are walking arm and arm in arm, I guess. I almost said arm and arm. I guess that's a saying too. I think it's arm in arm. Like they're you're, interlocked. You were kind of thinking about that. You guys actually like earlier, uh, you kind of had a conversation where you're like, is it arm in arm or arm and arm? And had like, you know, like a, a flirty little argument about. You're walking it's, arm in arm a, with a. Cer uh, certainly arm in arm. But you think of it as arm and arm. Your arm and arm with a This is how I flirt. It's you know I'm just I'm just wrong about a common turn of phrase. Yeah, and you're and you like, you know, refuse to back down, I guess. That sucks. But you're just kidding, you know? It's 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 like you you being kind of silly, you know, with a frankly, with the woman of your dreams. Yeah. You're walking arm and arm with her through the parking lot. You look over at her. Her um green eyes sparkle mm. in the night. And you think to yourself, how did I even get here? You kind of have like a flashback. So a few years down the road, you have gotten really into amateur boxing. What? Pat, that sucks. That really sucks. <laughs> I don't want to do that. So the reason that you did it is you've always, you know, kind of had a, a soft spot for the sweet science of boxing. And you've always thought to yourself, like, man, I could never do that. But you decided that this was the year of you. I don't like getting hit. I don't like getting hit. Why would you I want to do that? So here's the thing. You've gotten, like, very into amateur boxing. And you go in. Your your coach is this guy. Uh, uh, his name is... Uh, Patty O'Rourke. He's like this like old grizzled guy. You know what I mean? He's just like, ah, oh, kid, you know, he's got a voice like this. Yeah. Lifetime of smoking, kid. He goes, never take, never take up smoking. I miss it every day, though. Starts coughing. So you're like, you go in there and you're like, you know, Mr. O'Rourke, just so you know, um, this is my year of doing things that I normally wouldn't do. That's the, that's like the thing that you pledge at the beginning of the year. You were going to try stuff, you know? Wait, so you're not saying that I get into amateur boxing as like something I consume. You're saying that I get into amateur boxing as like a participant. Yeah. You're looking oh, to fuck. consume. This is so much worse. So I thought you were just saying about the thing where I'd like go to watch some of it sometimes. That sucks enough. Well, alone, that's like getting my fucking face beaten in. That's how it started, you know? And uh, you just started thinking like, this is something that historically I've never wanted to try to take on. And, yeah. you know, and you're like, I'm only going to have one life. I need to try these new things. And so you go in, uh, Patty O'Rourke, you know, you're talking to him and you're like, this is a year of, of me trying new things. And he kind of like looks at you and he kind of looks like, again, this guy is grizzled as fuck. Old man. He wears like a sweatshirt. He wears like a sweatsuit at all times. He's like, so up up until that point, he had actually been a fairly intimidating guy. You know those guys who, even though they're not like 
being aggressive to you. They're just talking to you. You kind of feel a little like, all right, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. This is how you felt about Patty. But for the first time in the entire time that you've known him, you see like tears well up in his eyes. And he's like, he's like, yeah, my granddaughter did that one year. He kind of like wipes his eyes and he goes, I'll take you on, kid. Yeah, and I so, can't tell you how much I don't want to fucking be a part of this. But no, it's kind of cool. A, no, it's, I don't want to be a boxer at, at all. I don't want to do this at all. Well, not now. This is a few years down the road. This so, is like actively dis actively do not want to do this. So your first day, you know, you get into the ring and Patty is like teaching you, you know, all the different moves and stuff. And your punches are like, you know, they're okay. But like, he goes, come on, you need more snap, kid. You need more snap. And you're like, what the heck does that even mean? And after a while, he's like, okay, okay, let's try something different. He brings in um, this other guy that he's training. Uh, they call him the bull. Why? Why do they call him the bull? Because when he gets a head full of steam, man, there is no stopping him. This guy will like sees red when he boxes. He's just a very, he fights with rage, you know? But he brings him in to like be your, your sparring partner. I love that. He gets in the ring. He looks at you. He's like, he goes, look, I look, I know my rep, but I'm just here to, to help. You know, we're just going to do a little bit of light sparring. And you're like, okay. I really don't like getting hit though. He's like noted. If I'm still having about this kind of reservation about being hit. I should not be boxing. I should not even be, I should not be anywhere near that. It's just light sparring. And again, this is Aaron. This is the year that you're doing things that you normally wouldn't try. You call it the year yes. of me. Oh. And so um, the bull comes at you and. You know, he does like a light jab, yeah. a light jab. And. You like twist out of the way so quickly it's almost like that scene and remember in spite the, the very first spider-man where the flash goes to punch peter parker and he kind of like dodges it and for just a second it's like he can see it like almost like slow that's how fast he moves. yeah 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 you do that you like you come back and everyone's like whoa and he's like he's like whoa like you know good job kid he does it again this time a little bit faster and you do like this, you just like duck right underneath it. Everyone gasps. To gasp. Yeah, because by this point, you've kind of attracted attention because you are just bobbing and weaving and you are dodging every single punch this guy throws. It doesn't matter if it's a jab, if it's a, a hook shot, you know, an uppercut, a right cross. You cannot be touched and uh after two minutes they ring the bell and, and like everyone just goes kind of crazy you well, i have over. an uncanny ability to dodge punches that i never knew i had before yeah and you and the only reason you knew it now is because you tried something you normally wouldn't do so <laughs> you um I've gotten into amateur boxing and you are going out there night after night, just dodging, ducking, weaving all over the place. At one point, uh, this is like during your, uh, your 10th fight. And uh, you always end up winning because they just, you know, they can't touch you. Eventually, they're so, 
you know, they, they gas themselves out that you can just, you know, punch them and they're like, uh, like knocked out, you know? So you are nine. That's probably and... one of my fights. It's a long game. Yeah. You view it like a very sweaty game of chess. Oh, so this is uh your 10th fight, you know, and you kind of start to notice that these, you know, they're held at the same, like, you know, couple few gyms. There's only so many people involved in this, you know, the amateur boxing world. And so you kind of keep bumping into some of the same people. And one of the people that you keep seeing, this is actually like the, the fourth time in a row that you've crossed paths with uh, one of the, uh, like, like the, the ring girl, you know, the one who walks out and, you know, has the thing that says one, you know, for round yeah. one. Yeah. And um, you actually like had struck a conversation with her earlier in the, uh, you know, like, like uh, two fights ago. Um, How? I'm there. I'm there to fight somebody. I'm not going to like, Oh, Hey, by the way, you know, I'm not yeah. going to. So what happened was um, you were, you know, in one of like, you were in like the, the backstage area, you know, waiting to go on yeah. and you were drinking some water and you're kind of like getting pumped up or whatever. And um, they were playing over the loudspeakers at the gym. They were playing uh, Shimmer by Fuel. Okay. And right when I got to the part where, like, the drums kick in, like, the whole band kicks in. Yeah, drink yeah. champagne, drink strawberry surprise, white linen on my paper. And then it goes, when I get to the part where, the, where it goes, lavender and cream, you sing along with that. Yeah. And she sings along with it too but she like harmonizes oh, no. like, like a third above so like it sounds like really good and for like and then you kind of like she kind of looks over surprised and you look over surprised you didn't even realize the other person was there that's how into the song you guys were and um you kind of like lock eyes and you go and like you don't even know well no it's part of the thing of you doing stuff that you never would do you just blurt out to her you go i love the way we make music together no, Pat, that's like the grossest. Oh, I would not say that. And she like kind of like takes a second and looks at you. And then she just like. She grins. She's got one of those smiles that like. One, you know, favors one side of her mouth. You know what I mean? That kind of smile, sure. you know, and she looks at you and she like. Just ever so softly and for just a moment bites down on her lower lip oh you know? no pat come on and she's like me too good luck out there she goes not that you need it you've been doing great these past few fights she walks out and you're like holy shit and like you know you like you don't even know this woman's name you know what i mean she's just some you know she's the ring girl and uh so her her name you find out later is um <laughs> amanda emerald okay and she has the deepest green no, eyes come on. that you've ever seen in your fucking life. Like when you look into her eyes, you think of like, like primordial forests. You know what I mean? Like the first sign of actual life on earth trees, but like the forest of a young earth. That's so, what I think of <laughs> every single time. God damn it. So after the fight, which, you know, of course you win, you ended up winning. Um, you were uh, backstage again. And um, Amanda Emerald is back there. And she's like, great job out there today, Aaron. And you're like, thanks. You too. And she laughs and you go, you want to go out sometime? And oh, she like, man. Yeah. And she the like craziness. Yep. Cause again, the thing that you would never do, you know? And so you like, she kind of like flushes a little bit like red. And then she goes, I thought you'd never ask. So you guys end up going out uh, on a couple, you know, very low key, low pressure dates, you know? Sure. 
you guys um initially you uh you meet for coffee you know you get there uh you're like yeah i don't you're like yeah um i don't even really drink coffee to be honest and she's like oh i was about to ask you what to get i never drink coffee and you guys like laugh you each get an ice cold bottle of water and just have a really nice conversation you know yeah yeah you guys um you know you get to know each other so mostly you talk about you know um you know popular entertainment that you each enjoy tv shows movies you kind of start off with that and then you start getting into you know a bit more personal stuff nothing too crazy or anything but you know what i mean you just have sure, like a really sure. you just have a really nice conversation and it like three hours fly by like that and um she's like uh all right well this has been really really fun uh i have to get going though like she has um she's a uh, a ring girl, but she also does uh, other stuff. You know, she, um, she has like a, she's like, all right, this is a little embarrassing to admit to you, but I don't know. I feel like you're not going to judge me for this. She's like, so I'm actually on the side, a professional dungeons and dragons dungeon master. Yeah. And she's, she's like, yeah. So w the way it works is people like pay me to put on campaigns for people. And, um, you know, she basically, she's like, yeah, it's, it's just like a, a fun thing. She's like, yeah, I got really into D and D in high school. Uh, and, uh, I just decided, you know, Hey, there seems to be a market for it. And she's like, and trust me, she kind of like does that like sideways smile again. And she's like, there's a market for it, man. Well, yeah. She's, she's like, like a ring. She's like a, she's probably like a babe. Oh yeah. You know, totally. you know, like, yeah, of course she's probably making she can make money hand over fist doing that. Oh yeah. She's like, there's a, and she goes, there's a lot of very rich D and D players out there, man. She's like, it's actually kind of, you know, again, it's kind of nerdy, but I don't know. I like it. And she's like, anyway, so, um, so I got to get going. She's like, yeah, but, um, where are we going tomorrow? And you kind of like tomorrow. lean in and you, and you go, I thought you'd never. Ask. Oh no. <laughs> This is humi what a humiliating series of events for both of us. For both of us. Oh. You and um Amanda Emerald. You guys are are going out one night, you know? Arm and arm. As you walk into the um this place it's a it's one of those escape room places yeah yeah it's called what's it called extreme escapes room it's, sorry extreme escape rooms what an awful fucking name extreme escape rooms yeah so they're escape rooms uh but they are like you know, pretty intense. And there's there's various levels of them. Some of them require like the very advanced levels. They definitely require a basic understanding of like ancient Greek. Uh, there's some how that, could that even uh, be. How could that be viable? How many people are coming through getting the advanced ones if you have to know a fucking foreign language? I don't know. Like, you know, there's a lot of like uh, people. I like it. Yeah, there's. You know, it's not you're acting like it's an impossible thing for people to to learn. You know, this is the thing that what you work up to. Segment, it's so fucking stupid. What? It's considered. Ridiculous. It's considered what's called level four twenty. Level four twenty. Know how to rebuild a carburetor to get out of the room. Well, the next level is kind of known as like the mystery level. No one's quite sure exactly, you know, what goes on. There. Too many levels. This is simply too many levels. Yeah. So, you know, extreme escape room. It's a, a place where there's so many different, you know, levels of, of fun. It's what they call it. And basically there are, um, 
There's actually uh <laughs> that's 420 stories. Ah, that's not real. Like that's so fucking tall. Yeah, they advertise themselves as the tallest escape room in the country. <laughs> so the tall that's what they that's what they do. Yeah, I mean it's just it's just one of the things that they're because there's so many different types. So you go there and uh have you ever gone to an escape room before or anything? No. So uh She's like, all right. So she kind of like, all right, I'll just lay down the basics, basically. Because she's very into escape rooms. Tallest building in the world has 163 floors. And you're telling me that extreme escape rooms has 420 yeah. floors. Well, they, do the thing- they build it as not the world's tallest building. But the world's biggest escape room. <laughs> yeah. God. There's um they do the thing where they jump from 12 to 14. There's no 13th story. <laughs> okay. Yeah, so just so, so you know. Uh, thank you for taking one off of the total. You're welcome. But technically there's 421 because of the mystery mm-hmm. level. So she's like uh yeah, so she's like, you know, she's into this. She's into this. So she kind of, you know, throws down the basics to you as they're walking in. She's like, yeah, so we'll start like a very low level. You know what I mean? Literally level one. That's kind of where they they kind of walk. Not They don't walk you through it, but you still have to figure it out. It's just, you know, it's the easiest level there is, you know? Sure. And she goes, and there's no, and she kind of like, she does that halfway smile again. That one that you have, that you have grown to find this, like the most irresistible thing that she does. Man. And you're, you're starting to think that maybe she knows it. And she goes, don't feel bad about starting on level one. We all got to start somewhere. And she like smacks your ass as you walk in. Oh my God. You're like, holy shit. So this lady. You, yeah, that's what you think to yourself. You go, this lady. Amanda Emeralds. You uh you guys walk in, start on level one, and it is a so a lot of uh the escape rooms all have like themes. Uh so there's some where it's like, you know, Arthurian knights. There's some where it's World War II. There's all these different ones. Level one is like Wild West themed. Okay. And, and I got to tell you, Aaron, it could not have gone worse. It turns out that you... Makes sense. You suck really badly at escape yeah. rooms. You can't like the, they give the clues and you're like, what? Like you don't get any of it. Uh, and there's some there's some that are more difficult than others for sure. There's a few fairly obvious ones that you're you're so just like I, I can't comprehend even what this means, you know. And so um, it's a uh, like an hour long thing, and out of the uh, the ten possible rooms. You guys get through like two of them. Because I'm just such dead weight, such dead weight. And uh, when you walk out, they take uh, like a Polaroid picture of you guys walking out and they're like lowest score of the day. (laughs) Oh, no. And they hang you up on the wall. God, that sucks. Yeah. And she is like really she's not mad but she but definitely like the fun of the evening is is gone and she's like she's like um okay and classic aaron rook state 
Yeah. And you guys hang out for a, a little bit later that, that night, but eventually you guys were going to go out to get like some ice cream, you know, but, but she, you know, was like, I actually think I should probably just, just get home. Oof. Yeah. That sucks. You drive home. You drop her off. And she's like, uh, you know, she opens the door to le like to leave. Then she turns back around and she's like, thanks for a great night, Aaron. And then she gives you the sultriest kiss on the lips that you've ever received in your fucking life. Jesus. And she's like, I'll talk to you soon. She like smiles and like goes back inside. So you're like, okay, like maybe she's upset that we didn't do very well, but she still likes you. You know what I mean? Uh, so you're like, okay, well, like whatever, like no big deal, you know? Uh, that night, um, you, uh, <laughs> you take a running leap and jump into your bed. You land, put the covers over your, you know, your body. You turn out the light, you go to sleep, and you dream. So you're sitting um, on a completely empty beach. You're the only one sitting there. And you're just watching the waves, you know? And you can see in the uh, the very far distance that there the waves are like darker and like larger than the ones that are closer to the shore, you know, to a uh, act like an unsettling degree. They break and stuff well, you know, before they reach land. But even yeah, as far yeah. away as they are, they're so big that that you know you can see them very very clearly. What's well, ominous? See, so you kind of watch those, you know. Waves bend and coil in the distance. And then suddenly a flash of like movement draws your eyes down and walking out of the sea are four figures. Oh no. <laughs> they get closer and you kind of can make out, you know, who they are. You know, there's um, a guy, he is wearing snow pants and like a, like a parka, like a really like thick one. Yeah. And he and he has like a like a, a huge white mustache. Uh next to him is um like a a blonde woman wearing a summer dress. And it is as it's like the same hue as like the morning sun. Yeah, there's there's a dude. He's wearing like a plaid shirt and like overalls, you know. Yeah, like super hipster, and he has like, um, a scarf wrapped around him, you know, super stylishly. Yeah. And he's holding like a um, he's like warming his hands with like his coffee, you know, like a coffee yeah. cup. Yeah, yeah. Who's the fourth person, Pat? The fourth person is uh brown haired girl and she has like a bunch of like uh beautiful like flowers in her hair you know yeah and she smiles the carefree smile of the young you know yeah and they uh they come close to you and they walk out of the sea, but like they're not wet at all. You know what I mean? Their clothes are perfectly dry. And they go, one of them, uh, the guy in the parker steps forward and he goes, Hello, Aaron. We are the four seasons. And he goes, Winner. And like pause and like, like, oh does, like, no, a, they do that. Really, the really cool pose, you know, like a karate guy. And he goes, Winner. Then she goes, summer and then the guy with the coffee he like chugs the coffee and like for a second like he like hulks up you know what i mean no i don't know what you mean he hulks up he just like hulks up for a second and then he goes 
fall. And then um, Why is he hulking up. The little girl shoots like lasers <laughs> out of her eyes. Jesus they, Christ. And they destroy the moon uh, behind you. And she goes, what? She goes, spring. The moon. They, yeah. Well, it's, a, it's a dream moon. It's not real. Oh, okay. And yeah, so I um, it's a dream. Yeah. And so uh, Summer goes, Aaron. We regret to inform you that. The calendar wars are approaching. Oh, fuck. And Fall goes, he's still like hulked up, but he's like talking normally. And he's like, one of these days, you're going to have to pick a side, Aaron. We hope that you pick the right one. And Spring goes, or we'll kick you in the nuts and like laughs. You're asking me to take a side based on a threat of violence you know an intimidation well they, they kind of like laugh and they go no you know you know how kids are you just threatened to kick me in the nuts she goes you just you walked out of the ocean you're threatened you know like you're right she goes she goes okay i'm sorry aaron and she like smiles you know this fucking sucks i hate these guys I fucking hate these guys and winter goes just remember Aaron the seasons see all you wake up great you walk out you will like walk um <clears throat> look down um at your phone there's a text <clears throat> excuse me there's um there's like there's two texts um the first was um the first was that you read was from uh Ben Sholak yeah he just said um it just says yep that was me last night and you kind of like laugh you remember like you know the other night you uh performing and like you were doing this thing where the, the guy running like the stage light was doing the bit yeah. where the light isn't on you and you walk into it, it moves it over. You know what I mean? That old yeah. school vaudeville act. And you guys do that for like 10 minutes and the crowd is going crazy for it. And you Ten lean minutes, you lean right into it, brother. And 10 minutes you, is so fucking long, Pat. Yeah. You don't even end up doing a set. Like by the time you guys finally end it, you just go, thank you guys. And the crowd just like comes to its feet, you know? And Great. so you, and so like you, you never found out who was working the light, but like, finally, you know, Ben's like, yeah, it was me. <clears throat> the next one is from uh, Amanda. And she's like, she's like, um, I can't get together today, but uh, tomorrow is wide open. And you're like, and you respond. Hell yeah. Br bring on tomorrow. Man, uh, you get up, you know, you do your uh, your whole morning routine, you know. You um, you walk out into your living room and sitting there is this figure. He's uh, this guy. So he is basically dressed like a surfer. And in fact, leaning up against the wall is a. How you have to admit to yourself, pretty goddamn cool surfboard. Surfboard. Okay. Yeah. He's wearing like a, you know, swim trunks. And he's wearing like a uh, very thin white, almost like undershirt looking thing. Yeah. He's like, What's up, Aaron? It's me. The month of July. He's like, got a second? No. <laughs> like, where does this guy just appear from? He goes, <clears throat> sorry, Aaron, but this is super I important. Yeah, I'm tired of being ambushed by some celestial being. Like, I'm tired of it. He goes, Aaron, get out. 
He goes, I'll get right to it, bruh. He's like, I hate this guy. There's a coming conflict, Aaron. He his eyes kind of narrow a little bit. He goes, it's called the calendar wars. Yeah, I keep being told about this calendar wars, but that's all I'm being told. I'm being given no other information. He's I don't like, know. I don't know yeah. anything about this other than like people are trying to get me to choose a side. Yeah. Yeah. So he goes on to explain that the calendar wars is like this upcoming like celestial battle, basically. Again, uh, and it's basically different types of like time, basically. How you keep, you know, days and shit like that. Oh, so he's like a month and those they yeah. were like seasons and there's yeah. like days and weeks. I don't want any fucking part of this bullshit. I don't want any part of this at all. He goes, look, Aaron, and his like you can see like his nipples through his shirt. Like they are rock. I don't hard. care about his fucking nipples. And he goes, he goes, Aaron, look. I know that this, this whole thing seems weird, but and most of this fight is going to be behind the scenes. You're not even going to be really be aware of it. He's like, but if you back me, bro, I will give you the ability to be really, really good at escape rooms. Not backing anybody, especially for that. Fuck that. Get out of my house. <laughs> He's like, look, Aaron. Get out of my house. I don't I don't want to bargain with you if your chip is I get really good at escape rooms. Not to join the month, guys. He goes, look, Aaron, are you sure? Yeah. Yeah. Please, please leave. He stands up, crestfallen. He's like, his nipples aren't hard anymore. Good. He's like. Uh, he kind of like sighs deeply and he goes, all right, Aaron. He walks to the door, opens it, gets on his surfboard and just like surfs through the air like the silver surfer, Great. you know? Goodbye. That guy sucked. And you're like, wow, that was strange. So, yeah. You go about your day, you know, uh, doing whatever it is you do. And uh, you go to sleep that night. You dream of a howling void. The next Great. day you wake up and it's a text from Amanda. And. And it says. You know, I was going to see if you wanted to go out somewhere tonight, but then I figured. Dot, dot, dot. We should just stay in. But then like a winky face. Oh, no. And you're like. And you go, hell yeah, to yourself. You get up um, to walk into the bathroom and you hear like a noise in the hallway and you go like, what? And uh, you walk out and <clears throat> I don't know how else to put this, but standing in the, the hallway of your house are the days of the week. And they all have like, you know, medieval weapons, you know, like. Are Spears you fucking and kidding like me? Sports and stuff. <laughs> and one closest to you says to you, um, sorry about this, Aaron. I really like your comedy. And they all just stop oh, you to no, death. Oh, Jesus. God. You're the first. The days of the, the first, week stabbed me to death. Yeah. You're the first casualty of the calendar wars. They erupt. This uh, fucking sucks. In full, like, you know, they erupt in full soon after and all of creation is destroyed. Great. Well, I'm glad I went first. Fuck this. I hate the calendar wars.